What is up everybody out there in Heroclix land? Scott Porter here, back for day three of our brand new unboxing series for the new Marvel Heroclix set, Avengers Forever. If you haven't seen days one and two, press pause, go back, and then come back to us here. You know, we Avengers Forever dealt with Kang and Immortus and the Timekeepers and everything. We can, we can play with time ourselves. We'll just pause time, you go back, you watch, and then you show back up here. And we embark again on this awesome unboxing series. So far, uh, the set has been incredibly varied. I thought it was going to be a lot of characters from the two Avengers Forever stories. Uh, turns out that it's not quite that. Instead, we're getting Winter Guard, we're getting Young Avengers, uh, while still getting little pieces, I think, of especially the Kurt Busiek, uh, Time Bendy Avengers Forever from the 90s that dealt with Kang and Immortus and the Time Keepers. Uh, yesterday, we took a look at the Dice and Tokens pack. We do know that Kang is in this set. We do know that Immortus is in this set. And it's pretty cool because that entire storyline is really about whether or not you are destined to become what somebody in the future sees you as. Uh, I know that concept is a little bit uh, large, but basically Kang sees that Immortus is a lapdog for the Timekeepers. That the Timekeepers believe that humanity will destroy every universe it exists in just because of a couple of bad timelines. Uh, it believes that there is a a power called the Destiny Force that Rick Jones, who has to be in this set, has access to, uh, will allow humanity to use the Destiny Force to gain power at the cost of a lot of different uh, alien species and races, basically enslaving them. There is this Avengers, Galactic Avengers Battalion, I think is what it's called, uh, where they're all based on original Avengers concepts. You've got space Iron Man armor and space Captain America armor suits. And it's basically an army of, uh, of suited, robotic suited uh, men and women who kind of enslave other races. But that was just one timeline. But the Time Master, the Timekeeper saw that and decided that in order to make sure all timelines are, are, are not affected in that way, that humanity should have the powers ripped from them that Rick Jones should be removed in every single universe. But once they get to the 616 universe and Rick Jones, who has already given so much and sacrificed so much leading up to the events of Avengers Forever, uh, he's paralyzed. They cannot figure out how to get him out of this coma. Uh, when he awakens, uh, Immortus, working for the Timekeepers, tries to kill him. And uh, Kang shows up and protects him. And the Supreme Intelligence protects him. And all of these Avengers villains protect him. And uh, it's kind of a very interesting storyline about how do you avoid the destiny that is set in front of you and, and how do you really take control of your own future. Uh, the team that is assembled, Captain America, Songbird, Wasp, Yellow Jacket, and Giant Man, uh, I hope that they're all in this set as well. Hawkeye, uh, they go from time, you know, time frame to time frame. You know, they go to the Old West, you see Rawhide Kid and Two Gun Kid and Kid Colt and all these kids from the Old West, and, and hopefully we'll see some of those characters in here as well. But uh, am I bummed that we haven't seen a lot of those characters? No, not yet, because we're seeing characters like Prodigy, which I didn't expect, but it's such a pleasant surprise. So hopefully we still see some of the characters. We see some of the storylines from that Kurt Busiek, Busiek run. Uh, I hope I'm not slaughtering his name. Uh, and then we see continue to see some characters from the more modern Avengers run uh, we haven't seen Ghost Rider yet. I, he's got to be a shoe in in this set. and uh, But we have seen Black Panther and some other Avengers. So anyway, uh, I'm going to stop rambling and I'm going to start opening. Uh, know that the pre-release is coming up very soon. Uh, the target date is October the 26th with the set uh, being set to release uh, November the 9th. Hopefully uh, those dates hold and uh, we get our hands on this awesome set sooner rather than later. And, uh, and we could sit down at a table across from our friends and roll some dice and have some fun. Um, here we go. Booster number one on day three and oh yes, we got the man himself. Okay, there we go. Kang, super rare. Boom. Uh, on top of that, we have another Winter Guard member. Uh, this is Red Guardian. I, I thought they were calling him Vanguard. Maybe, I, maybe I'm misremembering that. Uh, oh, we have a Guardian of the Galaxy here. We have Mantis. Uh, I did not expect that to be a big part of this set, but it's turning out to be a sub-theme of the set. All these sets have pretty cool sub-themes that 
continue picking up the pieces that maybe a complete team wasn't released in a past set, well, they can pick up a, a, a character or two and drop them into these future sets, and I'm really loving that. And then we have Falcon, who we have seen. I'll just have to make sure that that's the same Falcon, I believe, that it is. Is. So those are the five figures we pulled here. We did get our second super rare of the set. Now Red Guardian, I'm trying to figure out, I have to look at the card here, uh, because Red Guardian, the new Red Guardian, Vanguard, uh, is Dark Star's brother, I believe? And the old one is, of course, uh, the, the Red Guardian we all know and love. Uh, and if you watch the Black Widow TV series, uh, uh, or the, uh, was it Black Widow? Yeah, the Black Widow movie, the prequel. <laughs> I get everything mixed up. Disney Plus has me all, uh, you know, jumbled up in the brain here. But, uh, you know, the old Red Guardian is gone. He's retired. Alexi uh, has, has moved on. And uh, this could be the new one. So I have to take a look and see if this is Dark Star's brother or not. Uh, before we do look at Red Guardian, I want to look at this astral Doctor Strange because there has been uh, a... There we go. A uh, pattern in this set where we have these generics like this Astral Doctor Strange, who has mystical keywords at number 11. Uh, no powers, uh, but they can be spawned by other characters. Red Skull could spawn some Hydra characters. So I wonder if this is telling us officially we are definitely having a Doctor Strange that can spawn some of these astral uh, projections of himself. Uh, we've seen plenty of astral projections uh, in Hero Clicks in the past, and uh, this is nothing new or nothing different for us. But there you go. Take a look at the astral Doctor Strange. Um, we'll see how many he can create or how he creates them. I'm going to guess that just like Red Skull, it's going to be on a die roll for, uh, for one reason or another. Maybe not leadership, but something along those lines. Now let's look uh, at Mantis. And uh, take a look at her figure here as well. Mantis is set number 15. Avengers, Guardians of the Galaxy, Cosmic, and Martial Artist. Now, this Mantis has a rally die. If you notice, the background is blue. When we had Prodigy, who I think had our other rally die yesterday, it was red. Um, remove all of Mantis's rally dice to remove an action token from a friendly character within range and line of fire. Remove one of Mantis's rally dice. To remove an action token from a friendly character within range and line of fire, it doesn't say that she can only do it once per turn. So if you have three or four and your whole team is double tokened, you can yank tokens from your whole team, I think, as long as she has enough rally die on her card. Now, of course, it's, it's kind of hard to gather them. I didn't read rally die the other day, but I will here. Once per roll for each die in a finalized attack roll and for all characters with a matching rally die and trait color printed under their trait star, after resolutions, you may choose a friendly character to gain a matching rally die. Rally trait colors specify which attack type they can gain rally dice from. Now, yesterday, we had Prodigy with the red, which is opposing attack rolls. Today, we have blue for Mantis, which is friendly attack rolls, which makes a lot of sense for a character like Mantis. There you go. That's the back of her card. You saw the front already. So there we go. Some of the Guardians of the Galaxy. Now Mantis is on the outside of the box, so I was expecting her. I wonder if we're going to get more than just Star-Lord and Drax and Mantis. And man, if we get Drax, I, I want pacifist Drax. Let's get some pacifist Drax into the game, please. Um, <laughs> he's, he's always funny. He's always entertaining. Uh, but I like the, the modern take on Drax where he's not just a bloodthirsty, vengeance-driven destroyer of, of people and worlds. Uh, I like the depth that has been added to him over time, uh, you know, courtesy of a bunch of different writers, uh, not, not the least uh, Al Ewing. And so, uh, all right, let's take a look now at Red Guardian. And it is looking like Red Guardian uh, is uh, Nikolai Krylenko. And that, I believe, is Darkstar's brother, I think, as the new Red Guardian. He uses a shield. The old Guardian uses a boomerang, uh, which, is, which is seen in full effect in the new Winter Guard book. And it's a lot of, lot of fun. He's got Winter Guard and Soldier keywords. Special defense power, energy repellent, energy shield deflection, and vulnerability. Once per game when Red Guardian or an adjacent friendly character would be hit, they may evade the attack instead. 
We've got energy, repulsed shield for the motherland, repulsion uplift, let the shield do the work, the new red guardian. Look at the back here. You can see six clicks long, a little running shot, special power in the front there. Uh, there's a lot of really fun scenes between the new red guardian and the old red guardian. The new Red Guardian actually does have superpowers. A little bit of uh, electricity manipulation. I'm gonna put Winter Guard on the villain's side, even though they're, you know, it's, it's debatable, I guess, on whether or not they're villains. But, uh, you know, he gets into a fight with the original Red Guardian who was made by Russia in response to Captain America existing. They wanted their own super soldier, but they wanted their own super soldier to follow their instructions, their orders at all times, and do some pretty dark stuff. And the new Red Guardian, being brother uh, of, of a hero that has been in the Winter Guard for a long time with, uh, with Dark Star, um, you know, he, he's a little bit more noble, uh, but they get in a fight and the old Red Guardian will fight dirty. Uh, the new one doesn't as much, but he has superpowers where the old one doesn't. So uh, it's a pretty even match and it's a lot of fun. Anyway, uh, moving on to Kang the Conqueror. Read the Winter Guard book, though. It is, it is worth reading, especially if you love She-Hulk. They end up, the Red Room ends, ends up uh, taking She-Hulk hostage and, and she becomes uh, Winter Hulk. There's some pretty cool stuff uh, that they're doing with Winter Guard. It's, it's definitely worth a read. Uh, Kang the Conqueror. This is our second super rare. Go ahead and, and take a look at the card here and at the sculpt. Uh, of course, Kang, such an important part of that Kurt Busaic run, such an important villain in the Marvel Universe. Uh, the fact that he can hop around through time, do time manipulation. Uh, but in this story, it's a much different version of Kang. Kang is a conqueror, but Kang has never tried to defeat himself. And he's really up against the wall, and he's enraged because of it. And uh, the story is pretty cool for Kang. Council of Kangs, future, past, ruler, scientist, warrior, set number 56, Nathaniel Richards. Trait, summon the Council of Kangs. The bystanders on this card are Kangs through time and each have, max of one, leadership. When Kang the Conqueror uses it and succeeds, you may instead generate a Kangs through time bystander, okay? Master of Time. Phasing Teleport. When Kang the Conqueror uses it and moves five squares or less after resolutions, he may make an attack. Oof. Let's try that again. Special Defense Power. Super Senses. Toughness. When Kang the Conqueror uses Super Senses and succeeds, after resolutions, heal him one click. If a six was rolled, heal him three clicks instead. Oof. Protected Outwit. Thank the Lord we cannot re-roll those healing rolls anymore. Because, man, I would not want to be dealing with a Kang that's healing three every single time. Uh, this dial is eight clicks long. You have these three different Kangs through time. So, Conqueror, Kang, and Immortus are actually all tied to Kang. Interesting. Okay, I was suspecting multiple figures would be spawning those bystander tokens that we saw yesterday. Uh, but, no, it looks like it's all spawning out of just this one Kang. We'll put this out here next to it and the other two I'll grab them very quickly as well. So I was wrong on that one for sure. So you can spawn one of these uh, based on the effect of the front of the card. Kangs through time. That's fun. The Council of Kangs. There you go. Leadership roles uh, bringing more figures onto the battlefield. Uh, they're pretty nasty all in their own right. And situationally, you can pick and choose who you want there. Like the running shot, side blast, the outwit. I love that combination always because you can outwit something besides a defensive power. you got probability control. You've got some perplex. A lot of options for this Kang. All right. Second super rare, up and down. Uh, we haven't pulled uh, any primes. I haven't actually seen any figures that had an AB dial, have I? I don't know that I've been paying the, the attention I should have to that because I always like to try and find the clues to see what our primes are going to be. Um, but as of right now, I have no clue. Uh, but two super rares in, not too shabby. All right, moving on. There we go. We've got, uh, oh yeah, cool. 
We've got Kazar, or Kazar, Kazar, Kazar. I don't know, uh, you know, how people want to say his name there. We've got Iron Man. We have Wonder Man, but it's not the, I want the gray Wonder Man from the Jason Aaron Avengers Forever. I want the Brutal Beast, the Murder Machine. Uh, but this one looks like the original uh, Wonder Man. You know, has that little bit of connection to Masters of Evil and stuff. We've got Maria Hill here, and we have an Hydra Officer. So five brand new figures we have not seen as of yet. And uh, we've already seen that you can spawn that Hydra Officer. I know Nick Fury's on the outside of the box, so I'm guessing you're going to be able to spawn this Maria Hill. Kazar has a place in this set because he is a... Uh, and we knew we were getting Kazar, Zabu. If anybody was writing in the comments yesterday, Zabu definitely was a clue that we were getting K Kazar. Kazar is, uh, is probably a part of the set because we've got Black Panther and he's got the agents of Wakanda. Kazar is one of those agents uh, that he hand picks. Okoye kind of runs the team for him. Okoye, Kazar, uh, Fat Cobra, Gorilla Man, Odin, they're all a part of that to try and help the Avengers not just be responding to things, but be proactively out there searching for problems to, uh, or solve, you know, ways to solve problems before they become something immense and awful and terrible. And uh, so the Agents of Wakanda, Kazar is in this set, I bet, because of that. We'll take a look at his card and take a look at the figure here. Okay. <clears throat> He's unique. Got a unique ring there. Figure's great. Savage Land, Wakanda, armor, no, animal, mystical. He definitely doesn't have armor. He's got a loincloth on. Animal, mystical, ruler, and warrior. Set number 33. One with the Savage Land. The beginning of the game, generate a Zabu bystander. Okay, just at the beginning. When Kazar is given a move action after resolutions, you may move another friendly character with a shared keyword or friendly Zabu bystander up to half its speed value. So, Wakanda, okay. Agents of Wakanda probably can take advantage of that. Not a lot of savage land out there. So I think Wakanda, uh, animal, mystical, ruler, warrior, pretty good keyword selection for that trait to play off of. Lord of the Savage Land, charge, leap, climb, stealth. Boom. A special bond, leadership. When Kazar uses it and succeeds, after resolutions, choose one. Generate a Zabu bystander or move a friendly Zabu bystander up, its, up to half of its speed value. Oh, nice. So getting that Zebu around the board, you got charge, blades, claws, fangs, toughness on that Zebu. And, you know, the scene where Kazar first joins the Agents of Wakanda is hilarious. Uh, Namor in this Avengers run of uh, Jason Aaron is really fed up. He's over it. He's like, nobody is welcome in the ocean anymore. You all have been destroying the land up above. You are destroying the earth at its core and we are not gonna take it. We are not gonna take your, your runoff, your toxic waste. We are not gonna take your pollution any longer. You know, we are gonna free the seas of that. You are not allowed to be here. Anybody found under the waves. And, and how he does it is he attacks, brutally attacks Stingray, Namor does, one of his best friends in the world, brutally attacks him and then sets sharks upon him to murder him. And then turns to Tiger Shark who is Stingray's cousin or something. Stingray's where he is the whole romance. There's a, there, I think Stingray's married to Tiger Shark's sister, something. I don't know. Whatever. Uh, he turns to Tiger Shark, who they were battling at the beginning of this, and, and says, Look, you can suffer the same fate as this guy, but Namor's just merciless right now. And so they need some intel from, from Atlantis, and they don't want to do it uh, in too big of a way. So Black Panther sends Kazar to go <laughs> under the ocean and get some intelligence on Atlantis. And Okoye is flying him in a jet. And she's like, okay, this is, this is where you get off. And he just leaps from the jet with his dagger, his loincloth, and nothing else, basically, into the ocean. Black Panther calls Okoye and is like, hey, uh, how's it going on the mission? She's like, well, I'm pretty sure I just uh, sent that one to his death. He just jumped into the ocean with nothing but a knife and a loincloth, and he's expected to go to Atlantis. And the response from Black Panther is, he was raised in the Savage Land. He's going to be just fine. And uh, he turns out to be just fine. Uh, he is definitely 
uh, more than equipped to handle himself in almost any situation. I've never been a huge Kazar fan, but I'm becoming more of one uh, through the agents of Wakanda stuff. It's pretty cool to see the way that they use him. Okay, moving on. Let's see who we're going to go with next. Mm. Yeah, definitely some, definitely some blue raspberry in that voodoo flavor. Okay, let's go with uh, Hydra Officer. Okay, here we go. This has to be one of the ugliest color combinations I've ever seen. <laughs> this brown, green, puke color with black and red. Way to go, Hydra. Uh, Hydra, soldier, spy. Does have a special damage power ranking officer, leadership. When Hydra officer uses it and succeeds, you may instead generate a set number three Hydra agent on click number one. If a six was rolled, also remove an action token from each friendly character named Hydra agent. Whoa, each. If a six was rolled, remove an action token from each friendly character named Hydra agent. Ooh, that's nice. And it's not unique. You can use as many Hydra officers as you want. So that's pretty great, actually. Uh, remember, this Hydra officer can be created as well on its own. I know, my, I'm putting the cards all sideways, guys. I'm so sorry. It's got to be bugging people out there. <laughs> but uh, four clicks long. It's got that special power. Only 25 points. Um, you get the Hydra team ability. Pretty cool. It can be generated by Red Skull. can generate its own Hydra agents. So there's a lot going on there. And uh, I dig it. All right, I'm down with it. Still want to see uh, what Maria Hill does here next. I'm guessing she's going to be pretty much a carbon copy of what the Hydra Officer is, but just for shield. Let's see. Shield, soldier, spy. Set number 18. Maria Hill, logistics expert, special damage power. Leadership, when Maria Hill uses it and succeeds, you may instead generate a set number two shield operative on click number one. If a six was rolled, also remove an action token whew, from each friendly character named shield operative. Now, the shield operatives and the Hydra agents are not that impressive. They're not that dangerous. Um, but still, the ability to pull tokens off of anything and give yourself that flexibility uh, is, is pretty great. I'm gonna set the shield operative card next to her so we see at least what you're pulling the, the tokens from. There you go. Now, those guys are, are tie-up pieces and a half. So, being able to pull tokens and have them move around and maybe lock uh, another figure down or become a, a blocking you know, line of sight for somebody definitely has its, uh, its uses, I would say, in the game. So there you go, Maria Hill. Again, wasn't expecting a big shield presence, but here we go. Uh, let's go with Iron Man next. On the front of the box, of course, we knew we were gonna be getting an Iron Man. I, it threw me for a loop that Iron Man was on the, the outside of the box, on the front of the box. I was kind of excited because the, the Avengers Forever stories are not based around the big three, really. They're based around different characters in the Avengers world, so I was hoping the focus would be maybe less on some of the big hitters, but how can you have an Avengers set without an Iron Man? And here we go. Set number 14, Avengers, Illuminati, Stark Industries, Armor, and Scientist, Defense Turret Mode, Defend, Energy Shield Deflection, and Invulnerability. So let's see what they are defending with. Defending with... An 18 defense, not too bad. Would have liked to see it with a 19 maybe if you're gonna be utilizing defend and building a character around that. Maybe seeing a little bit of a higher defense value so at least you can turtle a little bit better. We've seen some figures in the past sets do this same kind of thing. They're offering defend. Man, we have a lot of heroes over here. Way less villains. I hope we start yanking some villains out of these, uh, these boosters. Uh, last but not least, let's go with Wonder Man, who I guess could, could technically go on the villain side. Maybe I'll put him over there. Uh, Wonder Man is our last figure from today. Here we go with Wonder Man, Avengers, Masters of Evil, Celebrity, and Scientist. Ionic Resurrection trait. You pay five points to add it. When Wonder Man would be KO'd, you may instead replace him. Oh, with the set number 27 Wonder Man on click number 9, then roll a d6 and heal him equal to half the result protected 
Pulse Wave. Okay, okay. So you pay five extra points. Let's see how much he's worth. Okay, 65 points there. But if you pay the five extra points, when you KO him, you instead transfer into the other Wonder Man, who now you're not paying 70 any longer. You're paying 100 because you're going to pay the cost of the figure that you bring onto the board when it is ultimately KO'd on its own. But it's replacing, right? So now he becomes a 100-point figure and starts on click number 9 there. Has regeneration, but you also roll the D6 and heal it up to half the results. So say you put him on the board, you roll a 2, you go to set number, you know, uh, you go to click number eight, right? Then you've got regeneration. You can regen again. You could actually get up towards the front of that dial. Uh, and the middle of the dial is pretty brutal. Ten movement, twelve attack, three damage without wit. I mean, that's nasty. You've got to use regen to get up there. So it's going to take you a couple of turns, but you really have a good chance to have something nasty come under the board there with that Wonder Man. That's a pretty cool replacement game mechanic. I am with it. And I, you know what, since it was the older Wonder Man, it says Masters of Evil in, I'm going to put it on the villain side. Okay, bonus content for today is going to be our Play at Home kit. Okay, I've been hoping to pull this guy out of the actual booster set. Haven't had the luck so far, but let's take a look at the Invincible Ant-Man here. Um, like I said, Robbie Reyes shows up on this version of Earth from a different timeline uh, or somewhere else in the multiverse where the original Avengers, the Avengers 1 million BC, were slaughtered by the multiversal masters of evil. The planet was then given to the Black Skull. The Black Skull enslaved the human race, burns them for fuel. Uh, the Black Skull is in charge of the symbiote. The symbiote is all over the world. Also, runs a, a, a group of machines that are called the War Machines that I, I think maybe Tony Stark's dad created and then lost control of. Not really sure. Uh, his father was an alcoholic. His mother was a big dreamer. She ended up dying young. So from a very young age, Invincible Ant-Man doesn't really have anybody there for him. He builds the Vision, a uh, version of the Vision in this uh, alternate timeline. And this Vision looks really cool. It's kind of like bare bones, like a vision skeleton almost. Like you could see the spinal column. You can see some of the wiring. It doesn't have all of the things that he needs to build the vision properly, but the vision is still loyal to him to, to a fault. Uh, he over time finds a lot of, uh, of different uh, allies on the world. You know, the infinity thing and, uh, you know, a moon knight on the earth, but they, their numbers are small at this point in the story when you, when you first meet Invincible Ant-Man. I said it's very much if, if Tony Stark had access to the Pym Particles and watched a ton of Indiana Jones, that would be the Invincible Ant-Man. Now, what I love about this sculpt is if you can tell, his legs are tiny and then his body is getting bigger. And when he frees Robbie Reyes from the, uh, the, the Waste Lord, which is Black Skull, the Waste Lord's prison, where Robbie Reyes is being tortured horrendously, he does what is uh, known as the, the biggest punch of all time or the, the farthest punch of all time. He basically shrinks down subatomic and then starts to punch as he grows to a, a huge, huge height. And he... It's like the punch hurled around the world. He goes from subatomic to this huge, and, and the sculpt kind of looks like that a little bit. The, the feet are tiny. The fist is getting bigger and bigger and bigger. It's a huge moment in that book. So the sculpt has already definitely captured my imagination. It's a great moment in the story. Uh, the maps that come in the Play at Home kit, and remember, you can buy this direct. Uh, this is a way where you know exactly where you're going to get in the box. There's no randomness to it. You know if you want Invincible Ant-Man, boom you buy this thing. There's a legacy card in here as well, and I'll share that with you guys in a second. There's also a map. The map has Star-Lord's ship on it, which is pretty cool. And uh, the other side of the map, if I can find it, is Avengers Compound Winter Outdoor. So, oh boy. Uh, I think maybe I can hold this up and you guys can at least see it in the, in the wide view. Uh, you know, just 
I, the glare is kind of bad, but if you you guys can get an, an idea of what that is, that's that Star Lord ship, the Milano, I guess the interior of it. Uh, so I, maybe you can find his like a little boom box in there, uh, you know, his little tape cassette recorder and everything. Uh, and then on the other side is the winter Avengers compound. You can see there. Uh, there are some special rules that go with these maps. Uh, the the Star Lord ship has un, unbreachable hull. Orange squares are blocking terrain that cannot be destroyed. So you can take a closer look. I'm pretty sure it's available online. There's an image of it. Uh, take a peek and see what the map is exactly. Let's take a look at the card for Invincible Ant Man now. Let's see. We've got Avengers, Stark Industries, Armor, Detective, and Scientist. The world's most wanted archaeologist. Once per game, free. If Invincible Ant-Man occupies an opponent's starting area, you may equip him with an equipment from your sideline of 10 points or less. Oh, very cool. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. Shrink and Strike, special movement power, phasing teleport. When Invincible Ant-Man uses it and moves five squares or less, after resolutions, he may make a close attack. I love that. Yeah, Shrink and Strike, so cool. Uh, I'm a little bit bummed that he doesn't come with a bystander for Shellhead, this robot ant that he built uh, to save him and get him out of so many situations. It's like his best friend in the world. Uh, but if you look in the back here, you can see six clicks. You can see the book that I've been telling you guys to go check out and read, the Avengers Forever book. Uh, there you go. Perplex, a little bit of outwit. We know because of the Dyson Tokens pack that the Invinci Invincible Ant-Man that's in the set can spawn Shellhead. I just wish he was in the Play at Home kit, but still very, very cool. Super excited to get that. And I, I love the special power. If you get to your opponent's starting area, he can. So his whole thing has been... I'm going to dig back into the past to see if I can help our present. And he finds Odin's uh, Mjolnir from when the Odin of that universe was slaughtered by the multiversal masters of evil uh, back in 1 million BC. And when Odin is killed in that world, as he's reaching out to the hammer, he uh, puts an oath on it, and it's a hammer of vengeance. But what you find out in the Avengers Forever storyline is that Mjolnirs from different universes can actually talk to each other. And that's where uh, King Thor's daughters, if you know King Thor, uh, you know, when after all the events of Eren's Thor run, uh, Thor lives forever almost, and he is the new Odin. He has three daughters. Those three daughters have flying goats and Bifrost <laughs> capabilities and and uh, they use different weapons, but they don't use their father's hammer. And they end up, uh, Mjolnir ends up reshaping itself and calling to them and taking them into the multiverse. So the three daughters of King Thor are now going through the multiverse and they're collecting all of these, you know, these different multiverse versions of Mjolnir. And this one is, is based around vengeance. But in the very opening, you see Ant-Man digging and digging and digging he finally finds the hammer and when he goes back to his lab where the other you know wasteland avengers are uh, you see that he has found uh, a wall a piece of like a cave wall that he's taken with him that has the the seven different insignias of star brand odin phoenix black panther iron fist uh, doctor strange or the sorcerer supreme and he knows that there are artifacts associated with each of them. So he's been searching for that. So the special power is really, really cool as well. Okay, let's, uh, it's always difficult because of the, the, the holographic nature of these legacy cards. Uh, we're gonna talk about all of the other legacy cards tomorrow. I will let you know every legacy card you need to hunt down, down in day four. Uh, but this is Rick Jones. And I, I pulled this piece from home. It's one of the coolest looking pieces ever. I think it's from uh, Avengers Assemble, I believe. And let me, where did I put you, Rick? <gasps> did I leave it at home? No! I think I might have left my Rick Jones figure. That's okay. I have all of the other ones. Ah, Rick Jones, this Rick Jones figure is one of the coolest looking figures of all time. We'll take a peek at it here, though. Uh, 
I thought I brought it with me. Anyway, if I find it tomorrow, I'll find it tomorrow. Uh, but you can see it's Rick Jones. He's accessing the Destiny Force. It's at the end of the Heroes Reborn situation. He's calling the heroes back to Earth and, uh, and saving the day. Uh, you see this legacy card uh, has Avengers, Cosmic, Future, and Past. I will read the, the special powers and the traits for you here in a second. We'll take a look. On the inside there, he's calling in Captain America. He's calling in Blazing Skull. He's calling in Namor. He's calling in the Invaders, basically, there. Uh, look on the back of the card. You can see the dial. And you can see that Rick Jones now only costs 45 points. I'll read you uh, this trait here. Uh, summoning my favorite heroes. At the beginning of the game, generate a bystander on his card. Each bystander on this card can only be generated once per turn. Once per turn. That's great. That blast came from my mind. Incapacitate. When Rick Jones uses it, he may also deal his printed damage value to hit characters given an action token. So, Rick Jones, even if we don't get him in the main set, is a part of this set because of this legacy card here. The figure is so cool. Uh, and you can see on the back there, it says, Significant Appearance, Marvel, Hero Clicks, Avengers, Assemble, and 2015. So go back into your old boxes and try and find that character, that figure. Uh, and this legacy card will work for him. And that comes as a part of the Play at Home kit. So you get a legacy card, you get a figure, uh, you get a map as well. You know exactly what you are getting. That is pretty cool to me. You know, uh, one, of the, one of the funniest things about the Avengers Forever storyline by Kurt Busiek uh, evolves around Rick Jones is... Why do comic creators always do this thing where it's like a descendant of somebody like Rick Jones is, uh, is controlling the Destiny Force and this Galactic Avengers Battalion who has put the rest of the universe under uh, enslavement, basically. Uh, but this descendant's name is Johns Rickard. I'm like, what? come on. Why, why would Rick Jones have a descendant named Johns Rickard? What? Come on. Let's just... Let's just to say uh, it's a descendant. We don't have to give him some silly name. John's Rickard. Uh, anyway, he floats around this little chair and he like holds his brain. He's like destiny forcing everything all the time. I don't know. Corny. A little bit of a corny moment. Anyway, uh, that is going to do it for today's unboxing. Uh, whew, I am excited now. I, you can see I, I'm amped up. We've gotten a lot of really cool things. That Play at Home kit was really, really cool. Uh, if you would like to have an opportunity to own everything I am unboxing this week while also helping an incredible charity, uh, you can do so right now at hdsa.org slash freeze HD. My unboxing, as well as a second brick that is completely sealed of Avengers Forever, uh, can be yours. It's up for auction right now. We've also got uh, all of the convention LEs from this year collected into one item as well as some really cool chases and other things that are available. Uh, we have a auction hosted by GiveSmart that has even more stuff in it. Sports memorabilia, entertainment memorabilia. Uh, if you bid on the HeroClick stuff and you don't win, you could always bid on other things and you could win that too. And uh, it all supports the Huntington's Disease Society of America and their quest to end Huntington's disease and help those that are living with it, including members of my own family. It's personal. Uh, it is a uh, quintessential family disease. It's genetic in nature. That's why I'm reaching out to you, my HeroClick's family. And I'm sharing all of this stuff with you guys. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed the unboxing series so far. I hope you're enjoying the prospects of what this set can do when we actually get to play with it. The set comes out for pre-release October the 26th, comes out for actual release November 9th. Call your local gaming shops and comic shops. Set up uh, you know, your way to pick up this stuff, but buy through them. Support your brick and mortar local gaming stores and comic shops. Uh, they need your support all the time. I want to say thank you to Hyper RPG Studios. Make sure you check them out on Twitch and on YouTube as well. Uh, and last but not least, I want to say thank you to WizKids for sending this stuff to me and allowing me to share it with you all in more than one way because uh, I'm sharing it with you over this video, but you could also own this stuff. So uh, pretty cool. Anyway, I will see you guys tomorrow for day four of our unboxing. And until I do, may all your rolls be critical hits.